Hi everyone, this is Ben Songrath with EdTech Teacher. So in part three of our Apple Classroom series, we're going to talk about some of the ways that teachers can manage the iPads in their classrooms. Um, this is something that I know when I was teaching with iPads, it was a big struggle. Um, you have to figure out ways to use classroom management effectively to make sure your students stay on task and that they're not um, going outside and um, getting distracted in their classrooms. And Apple Classroom offers that ability to control the environment uh, for their teachers. So we're not going to hesitate any further. We're going to jump right in and look at some of the ways that Apple Classroom helps teachers manage their classes. Okay, so here we have our two iPads, our teacher iPad on the left running Apple Classroom and our student iPad on the right. And so we've already gone over in parts one and two how to enroll students into your class and then launching and helping them navigate uh, through apps and Safari uh, in part two. So we want to look at how we can manage the iPads in our classroom. So one of the things that I used to do um, when I wanted my students' attention and not have them on the iPad, uh, maybe to give instruction or something along those lines to facilitate conversation and not have the iPad open, was I used to say apples up. So the students would flip the iPads over so you could see the apples. Well, now what teachers can do is if you look at the top bar underneath of EdTech Teacher, right in the middle, you have the ability to lock. And when the teacher selects lock, okay, the students are going to get a notification on their screen saying that Ben wants to lock your iPad. So this is something that's different from the managed version of Apple Classroom. So if your school's using managed iPads and managed Apple Classroom, the students don't have the ability to say no. Um, inside of this open Apple Classroom where, a teacher, where students are logging in locally, um, they have the ability to say no if they want to. So this is something you'll have to manage with your students. Um, once they hit always allow, then every time they're in your class, then they don't have to have this pop-up happen every time. So we want to just say allow for the time being. So when the student taps allow, it's going to lock the iPad. So it says the iPad has been locked by Ben. So this means that you as a teacher can lock all of your class's iPads down. So that way you can bring attention back to some instruction, uh, conversation, that type of thing. And then when you want to unlock them, you can see that the lock button that was in the top has now changed to unlock and we select unlock and it goes back to the home screen over here for the student to log into and they're able to move around their iPad and navigate around their iPad again. So again, real nice easy way to call attention up, give instruction, that type of thing. Uh, the next one over would have been nice when maybe like a video audio plays on a website or an app that they're using. You can use the mute button here. So if you tap mute, you can see on this side over here on the student iPad, the student's iPad immediately was muted. Um, again, very nice for those autoplay videos that might create a ton of sound before you send one out. Uh, so a nice way to, to kind of make sure that your classes aren't disrupted by random noises. Okay, last piece here along as we go along the top is screens. So what screens allow is for the teachers to view the students' screens. So that way you can see what they're doing and what they're on. So again, they get a notification when you're in the unmanaged version of Apple Classroom. So they're going to say, you know, the teacher is basically wanting to view your screen. So we're going to tap allow so you can see what this looks like. So over here, you can see that Bob's iPad is currently in uh, the, the home screen here, as you can see. But as soon as I would to open up an app in Safari, it updates, tells me that I, Bob's in Safari over here, but then also shows what's on his screen. If I tap on that, okay, and I say view screen, now I can actually see what Bob's screen looks like. And as I make a change on the student iPad, that updates on the teacher iPad as well. So it gives you some control to be able to make sure your students are on task and able to um, keep moving forward with the course that you need them to be on. Um, the last thing that's pretty cool here is that one of the things that I always struggled with when students would find something really neat that they wanted to share from their iPad to me. Well, there was a workflow issue. They either had to email it to me or airdrop it to me. And there was sometimes there was just some sort of, you know, sometimes that wasn't even the best option. So what you can do inside of Apple Classroom is that you can actually now airplay the student's screen to your computer or to your Apple TV. So this example is pretty cool because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cancel airplay out on the iPad right now. That's how I'm recording it. So I'm going to turn off airplay mirroring over here. So then you can see that over here it's going to update. It no longer says on 
the Bob's iPad that he's airplaying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap that and now you can see airplay is available. So I'm going to tap airplay and my devices are going to come up. I want to use Ben's MacBook Air. And now there's a code. So this gives a code to my iPad for the students to type in. And this is because I have my AirPlay set up with a code. So that's something that maybe won't come up on yours, but here we are. So now Bob's iPad is back being displayed. Really cool to share student work. Um, you know, student creates something really awesome in an app. They want to share it with the class. You don't have to worry about them sending it to you, email. You can just tap a couple of clicks and up their project goes onto the Apple TV or onto your computer that's hooked up to the projector. I think that's really powerful for sharing that student work with the class. All right, so the one last thing that I want to kind of point out is groups. And since I only have one iPad available, I can't quite do this effectively. Um, but what you can do is you can create groups of students. So you can click groups and you can say student group one. And we'll just say student group, okay? And now what I can do as a teacher is if I had more than one student, which I don't, I can add them to these particular student groups. So I've got Bob and I'm going to add him to student group one. So if I was to put in more than one student in here, every time that student group shows up, say I was in all, saw all the students, I can click on student group one and I can see what those students are up to. You can also see it groups students by what app they're in. So this is the Safari app, but if I was to get out of Safari, it'll change to home screen. And if I had three or four other students in here and maybe two were in iMovie and three were in iBooks, okay, those would all populate up here as well. So you can see what students are in what app and um, check it out from there and maintain and manage your class. So that is the rest of Apple Classroom. It's really not a in-depth um, program, but it's very powerful when used effectively. These were just three quick overviews on how to get started. If you'd like some more training, I'd be happy to come to your school and help you out. Um, and so please reach out, please contact me, contact EdTech Teacher uh, for more support moving forward. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Sangroth. Uh, look at our blog at edtechteacher.org and check out our upcoming summits and summer workshops. Thanks and have a great day. Uh -huh.